to feed the city. So last time we uh, we developed our cow barn, we put down a mob feeder, which is what we needed to breed the cows. And then when they bred, they made a baby. But then a baby separator that takes the babies away from the adults into a separate pen where they can grow. And then we had a mob crusher that when the baby is grown to an adult, well, it kills it, basically. Turns it into meat and all the good things that those animals uh, create. So, what are we going to do this episode? We've got the cows and the sheep. I did the sheep after the last episode. The same system that we got on this side. And it works a treat. There's a couple of changes I made, but I'll go in-game in a sec to show you what I'm talking about. Right, so what am I talking about? Well, we had a problem. When I logged in, before I'd uh, done the sheep thing, there was only one adult cow left and no babies. And I was thinking to myself, well, what was the deal there? And I think what it might have been, and this is a theory, is that the range was too big on the mob crusher. So we changed the range add-on from a bronze one to an iron one. Here's the bronze, which has got a range five. All we really need is range three. Range five is going to bring in animals from way too far away. But thinking about that, with these range add-ons, we could make a barn that was much, much bigger and uh, get a colossal amount of, uh, of leather and meat from these. But as you can see, if we look again at the mob crusher, we've got a whole bunch of, uh, of, of mutton. All oh, right, because when I put the sheeps in, they escaped. Whoops. But we've got a lot of beef. And that stuff we can take over to the kitchen. Also, raw mutton. So I've repeated the same thing over the other side. Check it out. Yep, so <laughs> there's some babby sheep. That they haven't grown yet, and they take a while to grow. Let's see, 871 seconds on that bad boy. But we've got a few sheep in here as well. Now, sheep apparently eat a lot more grass than cows. So, um, put down some more, uh, some more dirt. And that should regrow this grass, because it wasn't regrowing last time. But now the grass should come back. It'll still be very slow. Uh, but at least they have something to eat. It doesn't matter too much, because we're not really shearing the adults. So, yeah. Anyway, there's the babies, there's the adults. Looks like it's all operational. Now, I want to have, in the top ha top part of the barn, a little bit of storage. I'm not quite sure, because a storage a storage house is going to need a lot of space. So, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about that on the back burner. But this episode, what we're going to look at is getting something else from these animals. Now, at the moment, we just harvest them for uh, their meat and their leather or their wool, their skin and their bodies. But there's something else we can get out of these animals. That's right, it's poo. <laughs> we can take their poo. If we take, we've taken their minds, their bodies, their souls, but we haven't taken their poo. And that's what we can take from them now. So we need to head back to the house and, uh, and get making some new machines. So what machines are we going to need? Well, pretty simple. We need a sewer, which takes the poo from above. And that's pretty easy to make. We've got loads of plastic and all that stuff. We also need something to do with the sewage. Because this creates sewage, right? Like liquid poo. And then we can take that, put it through a sewage composter, and that will turn the poo into fertilizer. And once we've got fertilizer, we can feed that over to the multi-farm that we've set up. And that should mean that we have everything in place to, uh, to start actually harvesting a lot of wheat. We can take the wheat that's harvested, put half into storage using conveyor belts, and that should be quite fun, because you can split a conveyor belt to go one way or the other, alternating. That's a pretty cool idea. And we can store some of the other wheat, because that's a resource we're gonna need anyway, because we wanna make bread. We love bread. Who doesn't love bread? So let's get about making these machines. We'll put uh, the meat and the mutton into the kitchen, and let's see if that gives us any new recipes, actually. Oh, and now we got sausages. So sausages are salt, curry powder, and raw beef. Oh, and this is quite a decent kick of protein there. 2% protein. Still not the same as steak, but uh, we're getting there. We're getting there. The suaderos, I gave uh, Lewis and Duncan some of those, and they loved it. So let's grab what we need to make these machines. We're going to need two sewers and one sewage composter. So sewers are... We'll need four plastic, two buckets two machine cases, eight bricks, and, I do believe, one animal sewer, two animal sewers. Easy cheese. And now the sewage processing unit. This is a bit more complicated. Oh, pistons. I hate making pistons. Cobblestone, redstone, 
Do we have all this? Oh, yeah, I think we do, actually. Uh, I've got a nice little setup going on here now. All the machines are at my fingertips. It's nice. It's nice to be able to just sit back and just quickly put something together. Minecraft isn't really about um, the difficulty of making things. Like, nothing's really hard. It just all takes time. You have to go through a lot of steps. So any way you can shorten the time each of those steps takes is uh, amazing. And hey presto, we got two sewage units and one sewage composter. So the sewage composter is going to turn poo into fertilizer. But because this is an operation that happens um, pretty close, I mean, we're going to want to take the sewage from in this building and funnel it out this way. So, um, hmm, where's the best place for this? We might have to build a little structure here, just like a little poo house, so that we can send the, uh, the fertilizer down the pipes this way. We'll uh, put it here for now, because it's pretty close to a power cable. We can hook it up pretty quickly. We can also bring the pipes down underneath. So we're going to have to, um, hmm, we're going to have to bring the pipes underneath the barn. It's not going to be the easiest of things. Right, so the first thing we want to do is put down the sewers. We've got the sewage composter in place. Let's check the book, see if there's anything else we should know about this thing. So, the animal sewer. When provided with power, it will collect sewage from animals in top. So it'll look above itself and take the sewage from there. Which means we're going into the pens. Excuse me, boys. And we're going to put this slap bam in the middle. Just like that. And that should collect all the sewage. There'll be enough animals going around above here for it to get enough poo. Fairly sure. You probably don't even need to go into the uh, pen. There we go. Another perfect positioning. Now it's time to dig. So I'm, I'm, I'm at the moment like, oh, ow. We got some pretty cool tools. A hammer, an axe, an excavator. They're all great. Love them to bits. But slight problem. They are not as accurate as we really do need them to be. So we're going to make some iron tools, just just for, just for now. Because that'll give us the precision we need to uh, actually dig and chop where we're going. A shovel isn't that important, but we might as well make one. There we are, another set of tools. Okay, so let's start hooking these babies up. So the problem is going to be actually uh, getting power to these things. We're going to need a, a pipe output, something to uh, take the fluid from the animal sewers. And that's going to have to be underneath. But all the other sides are pretty exposed. Hmm. So maybe the pipe will have to be next to... Yeah, the pipe's going to have to come out from either the left, the right, the top, or the, or the, the sides. Oh, man, it's all tricky here. Wait, I keep seeing bees. Is there a beehive underneath here? Oh, I hope not. Now, this is a temporary hole, just so that we can get our bearings and work out where we are. So if I keep looking up, I should eventually get to the sewage. Now, this is the animal sewer. Here we go. We found it. We struck gold. So the sewage is going to have to come out to the side because the power that we're using uh, could damage the animals if they get too close to the uh, to the nubbin. But the cool thing is this uh, this little um, tunnel that we've got underneath here can double can double up as a way for us to get power down here. We're going to make some insulated cables though because I'm going to have to walk through these halls and I don't want to get shocked every two seconds. So since this side over here is right next to the capacitor, we're going to take the power from here down to here. Wait, it needs to be in sight. So that's got no obstruction. To mark this off, we're going to use, uh, let's see. Hmm, we need some, uh, we need something stony. Let's go and grab some more uh, stone. Chisel stone sounds good to me. So if we plonk that there, we'll put a connector on top, like this. And now let's uh, go underneath, dig until we find the stone brick. And start feeding through the power. Should be simple. There she blows, so if we plug this in the other side, hit it with our hammer. That's created the connector, the, uh, the flow through block. And now we can literally just put some relays down and the insulated cables. So we'll put the relays on the bottom. Is that going to stop us going through? Yeah, but we shouldn't need to come back through here. So that down there. Link it to that. Connectors here. Now we could probably actually widen this passage a little bit. Because at the moment we haven't got much room to breathe. 
There we go. Much more room. This is a much better idea. So that cable goes to there. Then we'll put a relay, uh, I think, here. Connect it from here to here. And then another wire connector here. And bam! Dano DNA! So, we've got two sewers down underneath the animals. They're getting power, I believe. Insulated wire cables honestly looks like uh, the better choice all around. It might be an, uh, an idea for me to replace all of the power lines with insulated ones. I don't think they work worse, but uh, who's to say? Okay, moment of truth. Is the sewer on? Looks like it's getting uh, power, and if my eyes do not deceive... Yes, we've got 75 MB for fluid sewage. What we really need now, actually, is some more adult sheep. So what we could do is we could turn off the, um... Oh, these guys have chomped through some grass over here. If we turn off the mob crushers, we can get some big animals over on this side. Bring them around with a leech or the golden lasso. And just, uh, maximize how many animals we fit into this pen. Because it looks like we're kind of at capacity. That's got six in there, and there's one, two, three, four, five, six in here as well. Maybe we could go to eight or ten. It's a bit cramped, but should do the job. Right, but this is a really difficult uh, place to get access to all this pipe. these pipes. We'll leave this hole here for now. But we'll definitely come back to that. Maybe use a hatch to get down there. That might be cool. Just, like, open up the hatch and climb in. But we've got the sewage collectors in place. Now we're going to need the sewage uh, McJibby Jobs. The Jimmy Jams. The Wingy Wongs. The Pingy Pingy Ting Tings. The Ringy Rangs. What am I saying? The pipes! Pipes to take the sewage to the sewage composter. Now I've made some more mechanical pipes. They're the mechanism ones. I love the pipes. I really do love the pipes in immersive engineering. But the big problem is they need pumps. Pumps are really big. You have to take power to them. It's a lot of effort. But the mechanical pipes, so much easier to use. So we're going to take a couple of stacks of those and uh, use them to zip around the old muck farm. Now, to use a mechanical pipe, we do need something else. And this is why we didn't use them before, because we need to use a configurator. And a configurator isn't an easy thing to make. We'll need lapis lazuli, enriched alloy, which we have, and a stick, but also an energy tablet, which is enriched alloy, gold, and redstone. Now, when we first started making pipes, those were well beyond our reach. But now, oh, now we can do it. Boom. Energy tablet. And now we're missing the lapis. Now, lapis lazuli, I don't think I've seen any around. It's so rare. Let's go on a hunt. We're going to have to go on a hunt for lapis. Now, we want a backpack. Okay, we've got so many materials now. There's no excuse for not having a backpack. And the chest. Here we go. Iron backpack, stage two. So what's stage three? A gold backpack. Another chest. A whole bunch of gold bars. Boom. Now let's see how big this thing is. Oh, that's nice and huge. But could be huger. Let's go big. Go big or go home. Only six diamonds required. Not as bad as I thought it would be. Boom. A big amount of diamonds used there, but I think we'll be okay. Psh, bam. And there we go. With a big diamond backpack, we should be good. Right, so we're on the hunt now. We're going to grab the lapis lazuli. With that in place, we will be able to make the configurator, which is exactly what we need to get the right pipes for the job. So join me next episode when we hook up the sewage blocks with the uh, configurated mechanism pipes. I'm going to pipe the poo straight to the sewage composter. And that's going to make the fertilizer we need to get our farm up and running. So next episode, we should end with a working multi-farm. Pretty exciting. Until next time, guys, take care.